So, hello, good morning everyone. Hope you are all well. <laughs> we are perfectly on time. Uh, so, welcome everyone. I hope you enjoyed yesterday, those two who managed to be there. If not, so there are some things which we were doing yesterday. They are just at the reception desk, so you, there is a time capsule where you can put your thoughts to be open in the next few years. Uh, and uh, then there is a, a birthday uh, book to write some birthday wishes for Polish Wikipedia uh, and some other nice things, but you can do this during the coffee break. Uh, and now we should probably start. I'm not going to talk too long, although we have uh, half an hour uh, for the beginning. Uh, Are you prepared to talk for half an hour? No. <laughs> 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 and I'm not going to... Uh, board you. Uh, so some uh, small an announcements about the program. Uh, as usual, and this is well-known tradition of CE meeting, the, the printed uh, uh, program is never as it's going to happen during the conference. Uh, and in fact, uh, this year there are two changes. On the website there is uh, updated uh, program, but what you have printed, there are no Tim Moritz uh, uh, session because uh, he is not arriving and there were two sessions by Marty from WMF and she is not coming as well so those are cancelled and some other uh, uh, sessions were moved to this, this position so just uh, don't follow too much this paper uh, program but rather look uh, at the uh, website. And the network was, uh, the password to the net network was just shown, so probably you have all network and... And it's it, here on the A, on the whiteboard. Yes, yes, and then it, it works perfectly well, so we are happy with this. It's quite fast network, so uh, hopefully it will be good for all of you. So, that's it. Uh, and then uh, we will give some more time for this first session uh, with Wikimedia Foundation. So I ask uh, uh, Catherine and board members who are present here to come and start. <laughs> <laughs> you on an hour and a half with us. Yes. <laughs> My apologies in advance to all of you. Are we standing? Are we sitting? We're standing for an hour and a half. If you want, if you want to sit, we, we can do this for you. Oh, if you prefer to sit. Uh, I think it would be more casual if we sit. Yes. That's it. So you want to sit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. While we get started and pull together the chairs, hello. My name is Catherine Marr. Uh, I... <laughs> I work at the Wikimedia Foundation as the executive director there. Um, and I will allow my colleagues on the Board of Trustees to introduce themselves and introduce the Board of Trustees. Hello, I'm Antonana, and also Bagie, and I'm a, board of, uh, a member of Board of Trustees. And I'm Maria Sefidari, and I'm also a member of the Board of Trustees. <laughs> It, and it's great to be here. So, do you have any questions for us? <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to start talking amongst each other. Or... I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is the Board of Trustees here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one is going to take an hour and a half. <laughs> um, so, the Board of Trustees, what it does is oversight uh, the foundation. What we do is uh, provide, I would say, uh, a level of checks and balances of what the organization is doing. Um, I would distinguish, why are you escaping, Natalia? <laughs> 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 To, to <laughs> be more precise, like, um, I know there's sometimes a lot of confusion between what the executive director does and what the board of trustees does. Now, the executive di director has uh, total control of the organization, right? She's the one that decides what, decides what happens. The board, what it does is, like, say, Catherine, we would like this to happen, okay? <laughs> and Catherine will decide how this is going to happen. And we'll come back to us and say, yeah, this is how I think we're going to achieve um, this goal we have proposed. Like, for example, with her. Catherine wanted to end harassment. 
in the winter uh, in the <laughs> <laughs> And she will come back with a, a skier plan, um, and uh, these departments will be involved, and this will be the budget, and we will approve that, and we will um, be uh, following up and oversighting how that happens, okay? So she makes, uh, in a sense, she decides how we do the thing, and we tell her what we want to have. And now Cassie is going to explain it even more eloquently than I am. <laughs> I think that's what they call passing the buck. <laughs> um, yes, so as Maria was saying, the board of the foundation is made up of ten people. Those ten people are divided into three different types of trustees, or four different types of trustees. Um, one of those trustees is Jimmy Wales, as the founder of the Wikimedia Projects. Um, he has a seat on the board, sort of, in, sort of indefinitely, as a founder seat. Then there are four seats that are appointed seats, that are seats that we choose from, or the board chooses, uh, in consultation with the executive director um, and the foundation, on, that are meant to be special seats with special skill sets. And so, for example, we always want somebody who has a strong background in financial oversight to be able to review the foundation's budget and give feedback on make sure that we have a clean audit to make sure that we're in compliance with all of the expectations around budgeting and appropriate use of funds. And so that's somebody we appoint because it's not necessarily somebody who would be elected to the board from the community. Um, and there's three other seats that we would appoint based on skill sets. So right now we're recruiting for trustees from parts of the world um, where we believe it's important for us to grow the Wikimedia movement, but who are not necessarily elected by the members of the community. Um, we also have the five seats for the community that are split into two different types of seats. Uh, as you may know, there are three seats that are direct directly nominated through the community, through the elections, so it just took place earlier last, this year, this year, this spring. Um, and then there are two seats that are appointed uh, through a chapter voting process. Um, and I think there's a conversation as to the chapters versus the affiliates and who can vote. That's sort of an ongoing conversation in the movement. But those are how the 10 seats are selected. And as Maria said, the board gives governance and oversight uh, specifically to the foundation, but I, I think also the reason they're here speaking today is that there's a very strong role of leadership that that plays in terms of the movement overall, because many of uh, movement resources are governed through the foundation and the board sets a lot of the expectations around that. Um, they're also my boss, as Maria pointed to, so uh, when they give me direction on what the foundation should be doing, they also hold me accountable for what it is that the foundation does. And if they're unhappy with the work that the foundation is performing, it's their responsibility to hold me accountable and let me know uh, so that we can make changes or, or course correct. Um, the board, we meet as a foundation with the board about six times a year, three times in person and three times offline, more or less. And most of that work is, is very sort of regular work. It's approving the budget. It's setting priorities for the year. It's giving guidance on strategic planning. Um, and then there's sometimes special projects that we'll work on. As Maria mentioned, last June, the board said harassment uh, is an issue and it's something that the foundation needs to address. Um, please give us an update or a plan on what it is you're going to do around that. Um, anything else that I would add? I'm Natalia. <coughs> I did say she would be more <laughs> Any other questions? Well, as Catherine said, there are possibilities for <coughs> uh, trustees uh, which are uh, selected uh, from the board. And as far as I know, it's only one position now. Uh, what is the thinking in uh, within the, the board? of uh, augmenting itself with with uh, outsiders, specialists, or whatever, as, as uh, selected or, or uh, members. You mean the appointed seats? Appointed right? seats, yes. Yeah, yes. so we have actually two uh, appointed two. seats at the moment. That's Kelly, and she has a strong financial background. 
I'm sorry for my voice, I'm still a bit ill. And um, uh, we also have Alice, uh, uh -huh. she was also appointed, okay. uh, so she, is, uh, she was selected for the yes. first time yes. on affiliates, I believe, uh, but she is appointed, and we are looking for two more uh, at the moment, and uh, because we set up the goal to be a more diverse board, I mean, we are all white, kind of, <laughs> on the board, so it doesn't um, actually reflect the movement, the diversity of our movement, and uh, that's why we are trying to find people from underrepresented regions, but really important regions like Africa and uh, uh, South America, Asia, and uh, that proved to be a real challenge uh, because we want somebody who can dedicate enough time uh, to the board of trustees, travel a lot, and also work with us and be an awesome person. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it took, it actually takes us months <laughs> to find uh, persons who can commit time and efforts enough uh, for us and to understand. And the other part of the question was about... No, it, this is a question. Yeah, but... Yes. Uh, Thanks. Okay. No questions? Are you all still sleepy? <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't have a question. I have an announcement. Uh, as you can see, there are etherpads uh, linked everywhere on the program. And uh, I, I will be the chief etherpad writer for this room, but I will, of course, uh, appreciate if you can uh, help me, if you can correct my mistakes. And when you join the etherpad, uh, just uh, sign your name so I know which color you are. Yeah, don't I dream, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are some questions. No? So I have one, one question. Uh, uh, during the election, the last election, almost all candidates were claiming that they are uh, making some uh, more effort uh, to vote to be more transparent. <clears throat> and uh, uh, f, uh, uh, during this election uh, pro process, I asked question, but, you know, the system of asking questions was uh, created in such a way that my question wasn't asked finally, <laughs> officially. So now I can ask this question. So what do you really want to do to make it more transparent? For, for me, the really big, uh, the best uh, example of the really open uh, the transparency is uh, uh, the, the, the committee responsible for, 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 for money. Uh, and uh, they have really huge uh, set of information how they proceed, uh, uh, explanation, the detailed explanation of all the decisions, like the board has only announcement, sometimes they write something on email list and that's it. And from my own perspective, it looks that it's still not really transparent uh, institution. Um, I have just one remark before I pass the torch to Maria. Um, so, it's not really election process, it's a selection process, let's try it on, wait, not, not use election, it's selection process. So, this is a question that we get fairly enough. Um, so, we've been trying, the way we've been approaching transparency is um, communicate more and communicate more often. Um, we do realize, and I hope people realize, that the board has been understaffed for a while now. Uh, we don't have a full board yet. So we've had a lot of board members who came new to the board and immediately had to take positions of responsibility. For example, Natalia. The moment she joined the board, she became the chair of the board governance committee. So there's been um, a lot of, uh, there's been a learning curve, okay? Now, um, we've been making the effort of being uh, of trying to communicate, as uh, you say, announcements and trying to be more detailed, particularly with the minutes, because the minutes are the most um, uh, direct way we have of communicating. So this is what we talked in the in the in the meetings. And another thing we've been trying to do is also be more uh, uh, present in in meetings, in conferences. For example, our presence here to be available to community members. Um, we've been trying to have at least one person in every regional meeting so that we could interact 
and of what the board was uh, was uh, doing or the, what the board has been saying. Um, we know that uh, transparency means uh, different things for different people. So sometimes uh, people want a lot more information and communication, but it has to be in a way, and this, this is something I always say, it has to be a, in a way that is sustainable, because at the end of the day, the board members are also volunteers. We do this in our free time. And there is a limit to all the emails we can send. Like, uh, a lot of the work of the board, um, I guess it's very invisible because we have a lot of meetings. Um, we have a lot of committee meetings. Uh, we do have a board of committees. And uh, we have to talk a lot internally, send emails, uh, have conversations. And I know sometimes you only get to see the end of those conversations, like the announcement. Uh, we have this appointed member, and uh, this is their bio, and it's, uh, please help them to join our community. And there's a lot of work behind that, okay? So I am aware that there's a lot of uh, work that is not seen. But I'm hoping that for the major decisions and for the major um, events, we have been communicating better. We have been uh, being more regular. And we've been trying to do this. Um, we've been trying to move away from the beaten path, not just with media and not just meta. We've been trying to communicate with our own communities as well, because that's an advantage we have. Um, so I talk a lot with the Spanish Wikimedians, Spanish-speaking Wikimedians, which means not seem like a lot, but that's 15 affiliates, just like that. Um, same goes for all the other trustees. And I know it's 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 a thing of luck, right? Because it's, it's the languages we speak and the communities we belong to. But we're trying to do that effort. We're open to ways of being even more transparent that are sustainable with what we are able to do as, as people and as volunteers, and we're welcome to suggestions. Uh, but there's a limit to how many emails we can write and how many updates we can put on Meta. So as I said, if you have ideas that are like low effort for us, but you feel more, um, it will be more helpful because we don't all the Telegram groups as well. Uh, I see them from time to time. And, uh, Seriously, if you think there's other ways we can be more present and more, more, um, we're happy to answer questions. We really are. But for example, you gave me the example of the elections, and we did have collated questions this time for the first year. Now, as a candidate that has gone through three elections already, I can tell you that that helped a lot because in the past I've been answering like 40 questions. I cannot answer 40 questions, and it's in English. It's not my native language. But if I answer 10 questions, even if they have little sub questions, it's easier for me. So if there's a way that can help for me to communicate better with the wider community without it being requiring me to spend three or four hours more, I'm all for it. So. Well, so if I can make some suggestions. So <laughs> my suggestions is to do this, I don't know if you saw how it looks like that reporting by uh, NBC. Yes, and for, for me, it's the best example how it should be done. It's just detailed information why they did this or another decision. And the other idea is like governments are doing in most countries. So they have official meetings, and then you can see uh, all discussion during the official. Uh, sometimes it should be hidden for some reasons because there are too many arguments or you are talking about something which shouldn't be public, it's okay. But in general, uh, in my opinion, it should be available. I mean, if you make a meeting, so why not to make uh, just a report from this particular meeting, what happens there, what, what about you are talking, uh, and if it's no good reason to hide it, why, why to hide it, right? So then, uh, like for example, I don't know about other governments, but the, the Polish governments just when they make a meeting, so they record everything and it's available, except some portion which sh shouldn't be available because of some state reasons. So the same could be done, I guess, for for you. Or the other option is to make like FBC, so when you have some decision to take, so then good, really deep explanation why this was taken like this. So it could probably resolve a lot of disputes as well, I guess. Not just short minutes, that we did this, 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 and then, but why? <coughs> So you mean more, uh, giving more information in the mix? Mm, could 
you one of the solutions, but really in detail. So why, why? I, I guess you are discussing for hours for each point, right? <laughs> but then but there is, there is, there is, there is yeah. one day or two day meetings. <laughs> yes, okay. And then the just information is just two lights that we need. This and that's it. So this is a feeling that it's not really transparent. So I, I understand what you're saying. Like, um, and I think you, like for example, I'm going to give again the harassment example. We tried to explain where that was coming from. We they made a, a statement. We did a blog post. Uh, so we try to add more to the minutes, because usually like meetings are very housekeeping minutes. Okay? We review the budget, we approve the budget. It really, like, I it's mean, very boring. yeah, it's, sometimes there really isn't more there. Like, it, there's no secret decisions or secret <laughs> conversations happening. Um, but I get what you say. Like, if we make big decisions, there should be um, a background of the decision. I think we've been trying to do that, but again, we're in a learning curve. And, and I think we get that. It's not like we're opposed to that. It's a matter of... Uh, sometimes people think, okay, we're, we're giving enough detail. And sometimes it's like, hey, I would like 10 pages about why you did, you made this decision. Um, I get the FTC example. But again, the FTC meets twice per year. Like, um, they have a, a, a big workload, but it's very specific points in time. It's not as continuous as it is for us. So... Sorry? Okay. Um, I want to give some suggestions before Thomas responds, but um, he mainly mentioned most of the points which I wanted to say. But I would like to say you you would like to ask some questions from our side, uh, but. Actually, I have no idea what is your questions, what, you, what you are working on, with which questions you are would like to have some inputs. So, if you would like to have more uh, input for your work, or would like to be, I uh, don't want to use transparent, but if you would like to uh, have some connection between the, the community and the board, then, then it would be useful if you if you communicate somehow which questions raised up um, and 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 uh, what are the most important questions you would like to decide about because then then somebody can 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 give inputs and somebody can others are familiar or informed what what are you working on and this 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 is a uh, answer the question transparency because it's clear we are work we, we decided we need this and this and this question not only minutes because minutes is a very specific decision we decide this but but the, the, your work is much more than a, than a minute you are you are if there are a lot of discussion behind which 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 sometimes doesn't mean a minutes at the end or come back time to time may I make a suggestion so two suggestions, actually. The first is I just want to also remind everyone that you can also ask questions just about the work of the foundation, um, because I know that a lot of people also interact with the foundation in their day-to-day -day work. So that's what I'm here to do. Um, but I'm going to hand it back to my friends on the board. And what I may I suggest is um, last year you had a couple priorities for the board, and this year you have a couple priorities for the board. Maybe it would be good to talk about those priorities, and that can help people in terms of thinking about questions? Um, yes, I, I will come back to this. But I would say, um, I absolutely agree with what you're saying. And uh, that's one of the reasons we, we come to the regional meetings, because we know that sometimes it's, it's very difficult to join the, the global conversations. And if, for example, we only went by what is happening on Wikimedia, <laughs> we know we would be missing a lot of opinions and a lot of, of voices, right? And especially now that we're in a movement strategy uh, process, it's very important to know what are the challenges and what are the opportunities in the different projects, in the different communities, in the different regions. So we really want to understand uh, those different perspectives. And we know that the CE group has incited multiple perspectives here, right? So yes, we definitely want to learn about it. That's also why we can, I mean, Natalia knows more about the CE group. But still, it's, it's good because then we can incorporate that to our thinking, to our thinking process, and incorporate that when we make decisions. We'll always be aware that there's uh, other points of view. Um, 
to what Catherine was saying, um, uh, from year to year, uh, usually starting with uh, Wikimania, the board has a set of uh, priorities. Uh, we set ourselves at least three or four goals so that we um, can focus more specifically on those. Even though there are some uh, jobs that we also, that we always are doing, for example, uh, you know, doing the annual plan or the annual budget, etc. And uh, for example, uh, this year, uh, some of the priorities we have um, in general terms are uh, have to do with the phase two of the strategic project, of the strategic process, sorry, and um, improving as a board, being more more efficient, and being more um, sustainable, I guess would be the word. Um, because we want to move from that uh, understaffed position that we are right now, and to be a full working board, because it's going to be better for the WMF, and it's also going to be better for the movement in general. Um, I don't know if I've answered your question, or because I think that was the second one. You answered it. I have seen the practice, so. I wanted to add a comment uh, following on what uh, Tomaso was saying about not knowing what the board is, is working on to be able to ask questions. A few years ago, there was a moment the board committed to publishing its uh, agenda, its meeting agenda. Um, which happens every month. Um, at least I forget, maybe a week in advance or something like that. Two days. Two days in advance. That's the commitment? Yes. Okay. Um, that commitment <clears throat> has eroded uh, over time and is not always met. I think it would be good to return to that, uh, to inform people what is on the board's plate and maybe even increase it from two days to, I don't know, five days for more of a chance to respond. And the format of that uh, list um, agenda is one thing, so people know these are the topics the board will be discussing, and by, uh, by elimination, everything not on this will not be discussed this month. That's also useful to know, so you don't think the board is working on something that they're not. But if, if, there's, if there is added an addendum to that agenda of open questions or inputs needed, where the board makes explicit, we are looking for opinions on this issue. You know, this is our entire agenda, but on this question, we really want we solicit input that will really help people uh, respond. Because I, I, I've, I've been noticing for years this kind of mutual uh, dance of, you know, well, what do you want? Well, you ask a question. Well, we don't know what to ask. Between community members and the board, it's very confusing for both sides, I'm sure. So I think making it a little more explicit would help. So you're right about the, the issues with the agenda. Um, when I say we were understaffing the board, the thing is um, that also affected our secretary. We had our secretary leave suddenly. And for a while we've been working with an interim secretary who did as best as he could. But the thing is um, we didn't have a full secretary until very recently. So that's something uh, that we hope is going to go away. It was a circumstantial issue we were aware that uh, the agenda was not being published in, in, in the time frame that we always did. And the minutes as well, but I think everyone was very understanding of the circumstances, circumstances, circumstances <laughs> surrounding <laughs> that situation. And I think it's something we can hope to see improvement, um, for example, for the novel language. Uh, uh, so we can uh, uh, tell about the work of foundation to 
some of the local community, but many people don't have such a possibility. And uh, just I want to foundation to have to pay more attention on this question uh, of uh, uh, sharing the information uh, with uh, to have better communication with uh, uh, many of uh, uh, Wikipedians uh, just to. Uh, we have a possibility to involve them uh, to uh, Wikimedia projects and uh, to co cooperate with the uh, foundation. Thank you. Uh, I'm, just thinking I'm, thinking of, I'm thinking of the contest. Oops. Oops. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll let you talk about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so as a non-native English speaker, I completely agree with you. <laughs> um, and this is something that is on the radar. I think we've been uh, seeing some strides in this, for example, with the community liaisons in different projects and during the strategy process, uh, trying to have someone uh, from that project who speaks the language trying to explain uh, what's going on or what's happening. I agree we need to... to Inform better, and not just inform, having an interaction, right? Because something that happens, for example, is you have these gigantic discussions in English Wikipedia, uh, where several WMF staff are participating <coughs> about uh, do we add Wikidata in the templates or not? <laughs> that doesn't happen in any other project. And uh, I would like that to happen on Spanish Wikipedia, I would like that to happen in the other projects, right? So it would be very nice uh, to see, I guess, more progress in that. But I think it's on the radar. Uh, for example, um, we've also been starting having conferences with um, uh, simultaneous translation and having people participate in their own language. And then uh, having uh, them understand in their own language makes all the difference in the world. And this is something I hope to see more, especially in the international conferences, maybe Berlin, uh, maybe well, the Kenya conference, maybe Wikimania, uh, the ability of people to participate in their own language and understand what's happening in their own language makes a lot of difference. <coughs> um, to what Maria said, I think it's true, and I want to acknowledge that one of the things that has really, from my perspective, is a very big shift within the Board of Trustees is that the Board of Trustees currently has only one English Wikipedian to my account, which is Jimmy. James. James. Oh, okay. We, okay. So James, who's community elected, so you know, as term, that's a community choice to elect another English Wikipedian. Um, I think it's incredibly important that we have a diversity of representation on the board of trustees from different language projects and different places in the world. It makes us more conscious of the importance of how we communicate and what it is we focus on. There's been a significant decrease, and I think this is very good, in board discussions about English Wikipedia. Um, these days we mostly talk about the Wikimedia movement, and there's a lot of emphasis on the diversity of that movement in all of its different languages and uh, backgrounds and contexts. And that's one of the reasons, as you mentioned, we're really focused on recruiting board members from regions that are not represented currently through community-based elections because those perspectives are important, and particularly if we want to grow the community across the world, we need to have understanding of what the challenges and needs of those regions are. On the point about English, I'm a terrible representative of this, because despite my best efforts, I only still really speak English, and I apologize. Um, but it is something that we've been thinking quite a lot about. I think the movement strategy process was an imperfect effort, but nonetheless an effort. We had people who come, came from, I think, 17 different language, 17? 17 different language coordinators, and those languages were chosen based on community consultation around where the highest impact was to be able to have somebody who could offer that language facilitation. Um, I know that this is something that has come across repeatedly from community members, at the regional conference for the Spanish speaker, Spanish Latin American, I don't know how Spanish speakers. The, it, yeah, but the Portuguese, uh, you know, the Italians <laughs> were there. A better conf. One of the things that came out of that conference was a request from that community to for the Wikimedia Foundation to communicate more in people's <coughs> languages. Um, I think that that is a really important thing. Uh, at the same time, I think it's, I don't honestly have an answer 
for how we both address the need to be able to speak to people in their languages and also recognize that for this community in this room, how many languages are represented versus going to a regional conference for, for Latin America and it's the, maybe three major languages. Um, and so it's, yes, very strongly I feel it's important for us to start thinking about how to communicate at least in more languages than English. And then I also think it's important for us to understand how do we choose those languages that we would communicate or prioritize in, in a way that feels representative for the community. I know that people have made the suggestion, you know, we should just choose the UN languages, but our, our South Asian community would say, well, that's not very fair. So uh, I think it's a really important conversation to have, and I, I will say that what I can commit to is the foundation is increasingly aware that this is important. It's in priority in hiring. It is a priority in um, board recruitment as well. Just a comment. In practice, it's really difficult uh, if you do not have enough time to translate uh, messages, like the community foundation or somebody is doing something and you receive message uh, in English and you didn't have enough time to just translate it because you, it, it should have been announced before. And also people use uh, difficult English to translate. <laughs> if you are a non-native speaker of English, it's just difficult to translate some elegant uh, sentences that sound great in English, but impossible to sound in any other language, just like on the top of your head. But uh, the cost of supporting other languages and the level of uh, discussion on the same level would be really difficult and really expensive. But um, I went to um, Wiki Women camp in Mexico and they had a simultaneous translation so Spanish people could uh, talk and understand and just didn't know any word in English, and it was really awesome, but for this conference, the costs would be, I don't know, like, uh, we, we would pay all the money for just having translators for everybody, but the level of discussion... I for you, sir. I for you, if you have so much money. Just uh, uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, just uh, uh, one way, just to simplify, uh, uh, just a simple example. Uh, uh, when uh, for few people uh, can know to uh, how to uh, put a grant proposition, so for them they can do this in their own language. Maybe it takes, for example, more time, but uh, some, somebody else will uh, translate this. But uh, they uh, to, to, uh, should have such possibility to uh, put the uh, information in, in their language, and uh, other volunteers will help. Just, uh, just because, like example. So there is an urban legend that you can do grant proposals in your own language. I haven't seen anyone, I think, make a proposal in their own language. It happened. But it, it, it happened. It happened. So I know, I know the possibility is there. You can do it. The report, I think, has to be in English. No? Better. <laughs> Only if you're an affiliate and you're doing your annual your annual report, that one has to be in English. Oh, here's a similar comment. Uh, yeah, having a simultaneous translation at uh, international events is a great thing, of course. Uh, there is also another another type of translation that needs to be done, to my uh, viewpoint. It should be, uh, for example, the written documentation of like the proceedings of the board and other members, uh, like other meetings between members, should be. Uh, it would be great to see them published in some other major languages other than English. I know lots of people who cannot follow or uh, have trouble following these. Um, Discussions only because they have uh, full knowledge of English. I, I think this translation, like uh, written translation, is not that uh, time specific and it could be cheaper to do than simultaneous translation. Thank you.
Yeah, that's a great idea. Maybe it's good. I would like to reflect on this suggestion, recommendation, because there are a lot of um, written things on meta or come from the board for <laughs> yeah. the present example, yeah. which very few people are interested in. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but mo most members of the community are not interested in this global movement thing. And uh, if we should we should prioritize what should be trans really translated where where would we need really uh, attention or, or we would like to have answers because if we cannot translate everything of course and, and and I'm not sure if these are the texts which are the most important from this point of view. Yeah, the balance of what to translate. Uh, how much information to publish is actually a really big concern. Like, if you have too much information published everywhere, you are just overwhelmed and you cannot find anything. So, yeah, it's not my fault. So, I have a question also to the board related to communication, which is a topic of transparency communication. Uh, and this is related to you, uh, most of you being selected uh, by the communities, by the affiliates, uh, for your excellence and, and for your work that you have done uh, with the communities and, and affiliates and uh, your notability in the region. And uh, this is related to your official role as part of Board of, Tr board of Trustees, but at the same time all these communities and organizations kind of looking up to you in times of trouble, to maybe take a personal stance as a community leader or organizational leader. Uh, but at the same time, you are board of trustees and you should have your, your board of trustees opinion. And, and the question is, uh, how, how do you manage that? And, and uh, what would be done better so, so people, people uh, get, get more they need in, in, in times of trouble? And, and you can have your leader role in your communities and, and resolve issues on the community level, but at the same time uh, uh, remain integral as part of the Board of Trustees? So, I think it's fair to say that everyone in the Board has a strong opinion, <laughs> and <laughs> she knows. <laughs> and um, we certainly have our own points of view and advocate for certain topics, right? Um, I think it's very important. Uh, if you're a trustee of a big organization like WMFS, that you have the ability to broker uh, complex relationships and uh, find consensus. I mean, that's what this movement, but that's what our projects are about. Um, I think it's very easy to have an opinion and just stick to it. And uh, anyone can do that on a mailing list, right? The ability to see other points of view, incorporate them, and be able to reach the best decision possible, um, I think that's the difference between a good trustee and a bad trustee. Um, I'm happy to see that, that uh, the board has been very good uh, doing this kind of uh, broadening relationships, complex relationships. Um, yes, uh, we all come from our communities, our regions, and our language projects. We have different priorities, which sometimes uh, we have very strong opinions. But to use um, a very... Um, a specific phrase that everyone can understand. We assume good things. Like we are all there to make a WMF and the movement the best possible organization and movement that, that we can. We are allies, or we visualize each other as allies, and we try to work from them. And uh, I think you can see that in the last few years, the decisions that have been made have been very high level. We've been talking about a movement strategy. We've been tackling issues that have been for me, like for example, harassment. I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to stop mentioning it uh, because I think it's one of the greatest problems we have currently in our projects and our communities. And we're not shying away from these big, uh, high-level issues. We're trying to face them on. Um, An example: the Spanish-speaking communities wanted uh, Wikimedia Foundation to have a second language, the Spanish language. Uh, Maria hasn't advocated for it. 
strongly <laughs> in, uh, during the board meetings. I mean, she would have, like, you know, they, they want to do it, let's do it. But, Yeah, I think it's also important to understand that it would be easy, easy. Um, if I was a single issue person to just push that uh, in every single board, right? But that's not that's not good either for the board or for the organization at large. So we try to be as international, I guess, as we can be, but with our perspectives, our backgrounds, knowing where we come from, because that's also useful. <coughs> And uh, I'm going to come back to what Catherine said before. Um, we barely discuss English Wikipedia now. But I've been in boards, previous boards, that was all English Wikipedia. And then you had to say, look, um, this is not true for the rest of the projects. Like, English Wikipedia is kind of an exception. <laughs> and maybe you shouldn't try, like, uh, pilot projects on English Wikipedia, because if they die there, then the other projects will never see it even happen. So it's been a kind of a learning process. Um, but I think we're, go we're in a good position right now in which we are discussing with a very global perspective and it helps that we have so many different perspectives and we're not trying to push one project or one issue and I hope that this continues. I would like to use that as an opportunity to remind everyone here that the board is only as good as the candidates who stand for election and the candidates who are elected are only as good as the people who vote for them. And so it is always a reminder to please, when thinking about the movement or the community that you want to be a part of, to take an active role in considering what leadership you can take. Um, the leadership at the level of the Foundation Board of Trustees is one of the most visible roles within the movement but I know that many of you are leaders in your own communities and your own affiliates um, take place in voluntary roles and committees within your projects or at the global level in groups like the FDC or the AFCOM. These are important roles that are leadership roles and ultimately those are also the places where the board of trustees tend to become elected from. And so please participate in the elections and please participate in either as a voter or in considering standing for a role, because the sustainability of the governance of a community-governed foundation is directly related to your participation in the governance of the movement. So, yes. Well, any other questions? Any other questions? We have been talking quite a lot about governance. Let's go to a security thing. Uh, so, uh, uh, one thing that uh, Wikimedia Foundation has gone through in, in recent years is uh, uh, either EV transition or that related to, to what we had. And right after that, you have uh, taken up this uh, wide movement strategy process and leading that. And at the same time, I can feel uh, that uh, Wikimedia Foundation staff and Foundation in general has become more accessible and open uh, towards communities, towards uh, affiliates. Uh, so it, it doesn't really make sense to me. So how do you manage that, how you have accomplished that, uh, having all these tasks after this uh, tough period on your table? And uh, how, how do you manage that and uh, uh, how come you're not burning out? <laughs> <laughs> so, the fast answer is a lot of hard work, uh, some sleepless nights. So, none of us three were there when the crisis happened. Uh, we sort of joined at the <coughs> intervals, and it wasn't easy at all. Um, um, She's trying to be diplomatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the words. In a second language. <laughs> yeah, um, so <laughs> it was difficult. It was difficult because there was a lot of people who were having a hard time. There were a lot of people who were suffering inside the Wikimedia Foundation. 
there were a lot of people who didn't know if they wanted to continue even working there. And I can tell you from the core point of view when I joined, a lot of taxis, and I think it was actually all of them, they were very burnt out. Um, you know that Patricio and Frida did not seek re-election. Afterwards, uh, the appointed seat, uh, Guy Kawasaki did not seek re-election. And um, there was a lot of turnover in the, at the board level, and there was quite a fair bit of turnover at the, at the, at the staff level as well. Um, I think that all the people that, that joined, uh, we all just joined them. Like we banded. Um, I also think that crisis allow you to see not only the worst side of a person, but also the best. And there were a lot of, uh, of great qualities and a lot of people that came forward, and people trying to, to understand what had happened and to move forward. Uh, trying to heal, trying to decide, okay, this is what happened. And this is how we're going to go move forward. Uh, I don't think it was a surprise that suddenly we decided, okay, we're going to think uh, what we're going to do for the next 15 years. And that was something that everyone rallied around. And everyone, it, it gave everyone a, a chance to look forward, uh, to hope for the future. And I think a lot of communities enjoyed uh, the, the opportunity to find a group, not find but uh, to be able to participate in a global process and have the, their voices heard. And I think inside the foundation that also helped us. Uh, within the board, there were a lot of new people coming together suddenly. And um, well, we were very hard work. It's like we were very lucky with the people we got with the affiliate selected seats. Uh, Christoph and Natalia had to uh, assume top responsibilities right from the get-go. We didn't even know if we were going to have early community elections or not. We really didn't know until the very last second. We didn't. And uh, <coughs> we might have had in Wikimedia uh, up to three new people with the appointed seats. It could have been potentially five new people. So we could have, we could have had a huge turnover at the board level as well. So there was this feeling that, okay, we need to, to try to have the movement process at least a stage one as ready as possible. It gives us a as the board is new, and uh, you know, uh, also the C-level seats, they were mostly interim. Half of them were interim, so there were those processes, processes happening at the same time. So it's been, a, 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 I, guess I don't want to call it transitional year, because I don't think it was that, but um, a lot of people were feeling that the positions were very temporary. I certainly was feeling that my position was very temporary. So we were trying to get things done. There wasn't time for anything else. Okay? There was no time uh, for dwelling or, uh, no, we had to uh, talk, we, we decided, we talk with the communities together. We go to the regional conference. We do this, we do this, we do that. And then um, we keep moving forward and we keep getting things done. And we have been getting, getting things done, which is something that makes me personally very proud. Uh, things are settling down now. Uh, and for example, even Catherine was in the beginning. Uh, one of our best decisions ever, we hired her full time. And, uh, and uh, but I, I, I mentioned this as an example of just how this feeling of everything being not quite secure, not quite uh, um, definite. Uh, and we were working under this, right? Um, but we've now, we're now in a position of you know, things have set, settled down, like we've had the community elections, we have sort of a full board for the foreseeable future, sea levels, important positions have been filled, the uh, casting is full time, it's not full time, uh, permanent. <laughs> permanent is <laughs> so, and we, nothing is permanent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we have a plan, and we know we're going, so things are feeling settled down, we're not there yet, and we know we're not there yet, uh, so we still have some sea level positions to be filled in, uh, we certainly have more positions to be filled in, but we're in a much more secure place. We know where we're going. We, we have dynamics. The dynamics at the board level, you know, have sort of settled. Um, I think we're in a good place right now. Definitely room for improvement, <coughs> but nothing like sort of the same chaos. Not chaos, but you know, of the last year and a half when things were happening really fast and we had to fix a lot of things in a very short period. Um, Maria has said a lot, but I just wanted to say one other thing, which is that 
I, I really genuinely believe that one of the best things that came out of the transition was a real clarity within the Wikimedia Foundation about why we were all there and what we believed in and what we cared about and a real commitment that was clarified that we were there because we believed in community and we believed in the mission and we weren't there because we were for a big website that has a lot of users. Um, and I think that that's really important and that was what allowed us to make a transition very quickly, Carl, to your point about thinking about how do we become more accessible to community, how do we take advantage of the fact that there's an urgency right now to try to rebuild relationships, um, how do we think about differently about the ways that and the beliefs that got us um, into that point of crisis and how do we start to undo them and I'm very grateful for the fact that the foundation was not only willing to work incredibly hard um, and that many people were willing to sacrifice sleep but that the communities across the globe were willing to have the conversation with us despite many years of accumulated um, disagreement and broken trust. Um, the fact that communities across the world were able to come back to the table and say, we're willing to have a conversation and we're willing to think about how we can trust each other again uh, is, a, is a real gift, and so thank you. Uh, a few years ago, the um, uh, Wikimedia Foundation Secretariat expanded very fast for a, for a few years. Uh, and of course, it makes the organization more complicated to manage. It makes it more difficult for the board to control and, and, uh, and monitor, guide the, the, the secretariat. I wonder how the discussions are going on uh, within the secretariat and within the board regarding the size of the, uh, the central Wikimedia, Wikimedia movements organization. Uh, I mean, we, we know that it would be no problem to get finances, I think. I mean, that, that is the least of the problems that there is in the moment. So that, that's not really the, the thing. Uh, but there could be other arguments, uh, both for and also against uh, increasing the, the central heart of the, the organization. Uh, do you... Do you reason about expansion or non-expansion uh, within the board and uh, within the top management of the foundation? Let's say in five years' time, would, would uh, the organization's secretariat be about the same in size as today? or much bigger. Do you want me to start? Do you want to start? <laughs> <I'll have> to. <laughs> um, so I had an interesting conversation and I'm very grateful to Cornelius um, somewhere for answering this to me yesterday. Uh, the Wikimedia Foundation is currently, the budget is for 302 staff members in this fiscal year. Um, you are correct in recognizing that the foundation almost doubled in size for a number of years in succession. The 300 number sounds like quite a lot, and I'll get to what Cornelius told me. The 300 number sounds like quite a lot. I also, you could look at it, and this is a just one way of thinking about it, as we have nearly 300 languages. I know people will pick up pick on me on that one because not all of them are active, but if you sort of think about the fact that there's one person per one language wiki that actually starts to sound like very small, or if you start to think that there's 300 people and 1.4 billion unique devices that come to the Wikimedia projects every single month, that starts to sound quite small, or 250,000 plus active you know, contributors to the Wikimedia projects on a monthly basis, that starts to sound much smaller still. Um, it was interesting that Cornelius told me is that in addition to the 302 people at the foundation, there's roughly uh, 
two hundred more, were you saying, uh, who work across the movement, who are employed in some way in some sort of affiliate role. So globally, we're closer to five hundred, which I think is a very different way of looking at us than when we think of just a three hundred person secretariat. Um, that said. One of the feelings that we have in the foundation is the more that we realize the work and scope of our work, the more we realize the things that are not supported. So as we were just talking about language, for example, we do not have the ability to support communities in the major languages, even the top ten languages, in a easily translatable, fluent discourse. We do not support at the engineering level with a degree of consistency, all the language engineering that the communities would benefit from across all of the different projects. We're still talking mostly about Wikipedia and not some of the other community projects. There are requests from affiliates about the da dashboard that they use to engage with things like tracking on edit-a-thons and education initiatives that we are unable to fully support based on the current level of resources that we have. I say that not to say that we are necessarily have always made the right choices about where to invest staffing. We can argue about that for a long time. Should we have focused on this or should we have focused on that? But just to recognize that the more that we understand the scope of our projects, the more that we understand the places where we are not fully supporting them. Another very easy example is thinking about um, our security team for the, for the engi um, engineering standpoint, our own security and privacy. We have a lot of things that we should be doing there that we're not currently doing, and we do not have a full, robust security team uh, on the Wikimedia projects. So just a couple different examples. I mean, I was talking to somebody last night about, is it important that we do policy, given, and I think you'll have a conversation with Eileen Hershnoff, who's in the corner over there, of our general counsel about the challenges that we face globally in at least three countries that are represented here today, we do not have a policy team to be doing that work. And it's not just the foundation. We have DEMI. <laughs> we have DEMI, but we only have one DEMI. We need more than one DEMI um, if we're really going to address a lot of the challenges that we have. So is there compelling argument for us to be larger, I think there is a compelling argument for us to be larger. But I also think that it's important that we grow intentionally. We do not grow too fast, because fast growth often leads to chaos, and it can lead to poor management, poor decisions, and it can lead to us losing touch with who we are as a movement, and the fact that we are fundamentally a community first. I also think that there's a bit of a myth that we have as many dollars or euros as we need. Um, it is true that we've always been successful in our fundraisings, uh, fundraising at the global level. It is also true that our traffic to the projects has not changed significantly over the course of the past few years. It is not growing. It is stable. And it is also true that our projections for fundraising are currently intersecting with our expected budget for, rev for fundraising this year. So we do not know how much more room there is overhead from our current fundraising approach with what we might want in the future. So as we look to the future, what we're actually looking at is building some projections for the next three to five years for the foundation's finances that will be public once they're finished, so that they'll be public for the board to discuss, they'll be public for the community to be aware of, but the expectation is 5% growth per year which is very different than the 10 or 15% or even 20% growth that we've seen at times in the past. And that 5% is really about keeping pace with changes in the cost of doing business. Um, that rises every single year, regardless of where the foundation is headquartered, um, and continuing to support the investments that we've already made. But I don't think that necessarily we should expect growth, even though I think that there's an argument to be made for us to grow in the smart ways, in critical ways. One other thing that I want to point to is that I do think it's very important not just to think of the foundation as a place where good work is being done. The thing that um, somebody, uh, Toby Negrin in the foundation, who's currently running the audiences team, formerly known as the product team, says all the time is that the foundation cannot scale, but the community can. 
And so we've been talking a lot about what are the ways in which affiliates and other groups within the movement can take on growth and responsibilities and new initiatives in meaningful ways uh, that allow us to do more than we can do with a, with a central secretariat. Um, and I think that that's really important as we look at things like where is innovation coming from in engineering? I am very excited to say there's really great work being done on onboarding new editors at Wikimedia Israel. Uh, we already know that Wikidata out of Wikimedia Deutschland is a success story. How do we have more success stories like these projects? Um, that's something that would be a wonderful thing for us to think about. How to diversify the work that we're doing outside of the foundation, how to support more work being done in a distributed way, because that is one of the real strengths of who we are. As for how does the board control or oversight all of this, um, we have, I would say, two main ways. One of the big changes we did uh, in the last, recently, in the last year and a half at least, is that now we have um, executives join the board meetings. This is very new. We only had the general counsel, who was the secretary in the past, and they did. By now, that's not uh, true anymore. We do have the best of the levels come as appropriate, as appropriately. And uh, then we also, something new in the last year, we've been having what we call informational sessions. Uh, for example, we have one now coming up. And we will be discussing, do I call it audiences or? Technology. Technology. We will be discussing technology with the relevancy levels. And um, it's not a board meeting per se, but it's a way for us to, to I guess, keep track of, uh, of what's going on. So that by the time we go to the board meeting, we do have all, all the preparation done. Uh, as I said, this is very recent. We do it uh, very systematic. And it's a great way for us as well to, to interact with all the three levels. Because that's something that in the past has did not happen. And uh, we would have a board that would be very familiar with two, well, not actually, only one three level and they did. And the rest of the three levels were a bit of a mistake. <laughs> So that's something that uh, has been a fantastic um, advancement. Surely the women of the CBE have questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, I have a very um, primitive question about Wikimania. So I know that nobody from Belarus visited, for example, the last Wikimania, and I applied for myself. And I am interested, do you have a criteria that uh, something like at least the one person from the language group should uh, be on the Wikimania conference? Or what criteria you have? Because, for example, I do not have a lot of contributions online, but I contribute to community, and uh, I don't know how it can be measured, because, yes, so th that's the question. So, I can answer it. <laughs> 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 how about I, I give it a try, and then they can correct me, because they probably don't match than I, I do. But Wikimania is sort of a special case in that, so there is a volunteer committee um, that makes actually the decisions. It's, it's, I honestly don't know much about this. So. <laughs> uh, so the scholarship committee is a volunteer committee. I will let Asaf speak to that. But I do want to say something that I think is incredibly important. Your edit count is not your contribution. Your edit count is not your contribution. And I want to say that over and over again because your edit count can be an incredible contribution. Your edit count is important if that is the way that you choose to contribute. But there are many people who choose to contribute in different ways. And I think that is a cultural shift that we need to be aware of. There are people who organize. There are people who do advocacy. There are people who do partnerships. There are people who do the soft work that is often very hard work of maintaining positive working relationships. There are people who have conversations that help create a coherent and friendly editing environment. Your edit count is very important if that is how you choose to contribute, but it is not the only way to contribute. And that is something I believe very firmly, and I believe it is also key to how we continue to diversify the type of people who come into our movement and make our movement more representative. It's my belief. It's something that I think is a cultural shift. 
It does not in any way diminish the importance of all of the edits that people make. It is just a recognition that people contribute in different ways. So that's just my philosophy. The specifics of how the committee chooses us off, I, I hand it over to you. Thank you. Um, first, to your direct question, there's a simple answer. No, there is no guarantee that at least one person from a language, community, or a country would go to Wikimania. We have had Wikimanias without a single editor from China, for example. Or just this last Wikimania did not have a single person from the very large Hindi community. So that happens. Um, in terms of how that happens or why that happens, um, the scholarship committee can only look at what's before it, which means, A, people need to apply. Uh, you did, of course, but some, sometimes there's very few applications from a particular community and they're not good. So then we, the scholarship committee doesn't have anyone to give the scholarship to. So first of all, you need to apply. Secondly, the committee can only look at what's before it in terms of what is in the application. And what is in the application is your username, which is used, yes, to look at your edit count and edit history, not just count, but like, you know, where are you active, what do you do? Uh, that is something they do. But the other component, the way you go beyond edit count, as Catherine said, is the, the text, the narrative in your application. And you would be surprised. Some people have, I, I haven't seen your application, I'm not responding to your particular case, but in general, uh, people even with a very high edit count are turned down and they cannot understand how that happened because they do so much and they work so hard. But if you do look at their application, you sometimes find that they've not done a good job of explaining what they do, what they want to do at Wikimania, which is one of the questions, right? Why do you want to attend this conference? Do you intend to attend certain lectures, uh, um, promote some idea, look for partners to do something? You know, if they give very perfunctory answers, you know, if they, if they answer such a question with, I don't know, uh, I want to have fun or I want to learn <laughs> without any more details, that's something the committee, remember, it's always looking at that in, alongside other applications that did put in the effort. So they would, they would give it to someone who made a more coherent case for why they want to go. There's also language issues here, of course. You can, as far as I know, you can submit your applications in languages other than English. And the uh, scholarship committee has support available to them to help them deal with non-English text. So that's a partial way of mitigating the language issue. But the point is, you really need to put your best effort into your application, and there's still no guarantee you would get a representative from every community because, again, the math is we give out about 120, 130 scholarships from WMF. There's a few other ones from other chapters, but you know, for WMF it's about 120, 130 scholarships. Even if it was one per country, we would cover the entire world. So by definition, some people will be left out in this process, and you are compared to other applicants. So the best advice I can give all of you who are wondering about that or who want to make sure your community and your country is represented is take these questions in the application really seriously. Really spend the time uh, giving a full, complete answer. And if you think you did and you just can't understand why you weren't selected, you can actually ask. You can write to the scholarships committee now, not during the rush uh, time of Wikimania and say, you know, I, I submitted an application, I didn't get selected, I would like feedback on it because I want to make it better next time. And people will give you that feedback. So that's a useful tip to uh, consider. Uh, yeah, the feedback can be useful. Thank you. Yes, I want to add something. So for all of you who are interested to apply for a scholarship Microphone. in Wikimania, uh, I have prepared a learning pattern on preparation for Wikimania in which I explain uh, among uh, the other things, how people should approach the conference, what uh, should they do before applying for a scholarship, and how to consider all the questions which are uh, uh, presented in the uh, application form, and what are the different strategies and ways that uh, they can approach in uh, answering them to make a quality application. So uh, sometimes, as, as, it, uh, as, as, as I said, is uh, not about your contribution, but how you're going to promote, how you're, how you're going to sell your contribution to the scholarship committee. And so I think that's uh, one of the most important things that uh, all uh, future scholarship applicants should uh, take into, into consideration. 
So it's not something that I think is uh, uh, reality or uh, which uh, has to become a rule for all applicants, but it's, uh, but it's only my perspective of view. And uh, now the learning pattern is available at Meta, where you can also find some other similar patterns on participation on conferences or uh, approaching to fulfilling uh, application forms or anything else. So just uh, search for the preparation for the learning pattern and you're going to find an extensive uh, text about all aspects of uh, participation in the scheme. Thank you. So I just want to amplify uh, what you said before about contributors that work on the ground and contributors that have a certain, uh, let's say, lower edit count. Um, so talking, with all of us, the majority of us are volunteers, so you have to split your time in what you do. And organizing events or meetings with institutions takes a lot of time. I also understand that it's hard um, to measure it, and you need to have a mechanism of measuring it. Uh, but I think that's an issue. I, I, I personally feel that's a very big issue. I've seen it in communities around the area where I've, I've been active to. And the second thing I want to add is that there is a, a talking about outreach and not having only white males. Uh, and white people in, in the board. Um, there is also one other issue I've seen in other communities as well, not only in Wikipedia, but also free software or open source software communities, uh, open knowledge in general. That is the introvert, uh, uh, extrovert issue. Uh, of course, it's, this is not only in, in these communities, it's also in, in the world in general. But I think uh, we need to start talking about this issue at some point. Again, I don't know what's the best mechanism to fight this, but uh, I think that's a big issue with people that do not feel comfortable uh, you know, being an extrovert in general. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I, I changed the subject, but I had that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were all introverts, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you find out question, please go. Oh, no, I think that's wonderful. We talked, um, for those of you who have not read it, there's a wonderful post on the Wikimedia blog by Guillaume Pommier from, uh, he's a French Wikimedian who talks about what it's like to have neurodiversity as part of our community. And it's not specifically about introvert or extrovert, but it talks about people who have sort of normative neurostructures and people who are on um, the spectrum of uh, Asperger's to autism and how that's an important thing within our community to recognize. and. One of the things we've been talking about is when we plan events, how do we make sure that we not only have social moments, but we also have quiet spaces for people who need to step back and just not socialize and have a space where they can collect their thoughts. So I, I love that you brought that up. I think it is really important. The more that we think about diversity, it can't... Yes, it is, it is gender, and I'm very excited to sit here with two other women. Um, it, is, it is ethnicity, it is language, it is culture, it is uh, sexual orientation, it is all these different things, but it also has to be personality, it also has to be um, able ability, uh, thinking about how do we make space for people of just all sorts of different backgrounds. So, yes, thank you. Why, why do you take account of uh, the uh, experience in editing? I think that's that's not a good idea because um, when I'm editing something, I uh, like to make a new account because I'm criticized heavily with a new account. My old, my like uh, uh, 11 years old account is never criticized, so I I get bored. So <laughs> I no one no one really cares about my edits and no one really sometimes they just destroy some things, but. But they don't don't criticize, don't don't look at my edits. And if I, if I make a new account, it's so it, it's almost almost sure that they delete it, even if it's better than the all articles written in like five years ago. So that's strange for me. So I just want to say thank you for sharing that story <laughs> because that is a. We at the foundation are always thinking about the different ways that editors edit and what are the different patterns and we call them like user journeys and profiles. I have never heard that one before. <laughs> well, put on your user page. Please treat me like a newbie. <laughs> okay, so we have ten minutes.
eight minutes left, so some questions? I wanted to add a, sorry, I wanted to add a technical comment I neglected about the scholarships issue, and that is there is a disadvantage or a, like a minus something to the score for people who have attended Wikimania. So that is intended to give more of a chance for people who have not attended yet. So if you attended, you know, year A and then year A plus one, your chances to attend again on year A plus two are significantly lower. So that is something that is, in addition to the edit count and the application itself, they do look at the attendance history, or, or rather scholarship receiving history uh, of the applicant. So that gives, again, more of a chance for people who have not had a chance before. Yeah, One, two, another question. Yeah. So, okay, so you were talking already. So. <laughs> <laughs> One, oh, hello everyone. Uh, I have a question. Something like uh, we talk a lot of, oh, I'm focused mostly on a community building in, in my country in Belarus, and we talk a lot about. Um, Something like what is the first, the content or the community? So many of the guys told usually that, uh, okay, content. So how how many edits do you have? Uh, what do you think about the question? So how you answer for editors in Belarus on, on this question? What is the first, content or community? Thank you. <laughs> hmm. um, because I'm an editor, uh, for me, content is really, really important. Like, if I want to know a person, usually I would look at the edit accounts, because that's the objective reality, like, the most objective thing. Um, <laughs> I, can, <laughs> uh, I can find out uh, according to the edit, edits. Uh, but, um, as it was having my journey, my user journey, um, <laughs> through wiki projects, I thought that uh, if we have an editor who is really great, or she is really great, and then they just suddenly leave, we have a gap in the community in a lot of ways, in content, in history, and in a lot of really other ways. So the only way we can make sure that our projects are thriving is if we have sustainability in the community, and that's why building the community, building, investing in the volunteers is really important. Like newbies, but also having, like, trying to make um, uh, experienced editors uh, stay and edit and feel that they are welcome. Like, it's not like, you are newbies, so you are welcome, if you are experienced, you don't care about you. So, for me, it's actually content and uh, edit, uh, like, uh, and community. That's, um, I, you, you cannot actually, like, sacrifice something in order to get another one. They, 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 they should go hand in hand. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I don't think you can have excellent content without a community. I can create a fairly good article, but if two other people come and add references and add uh, sections, it's going to be much better. It's as simple as that. Um, I don't pay any attention to edit count at all. Uh, for the simple reason that, for example, in Spain, we didn't have decent internet until 2010, 2011. So most of the community learned to work off wiki, and then in one edit, publish everything. And now with the content translation tool, we're sort of back to that. <laughs> with one edit, you can have 50 kilobytes of information published. So I really don't pay any attention to that. And uh, I think, uh, I honestly think that uh, you can have fantastic um, content with just like one edit. So I, don't, I just want to urge people to, to not pay that much attention to it. But I really, really think, <laughs> I, I, I really, really think that uh, communities keep having very good content. And uh, you can tell that when there's problems in a community, um, that is reflected in the content. Uh, either the content is very disputed, or there's gaps on, on the content, or it's a very POV-ish, point of view-ish. Um, sometimes you can tell. Of course, every, in every project there are disputed articles, of course that happens. 
but uh, we all know um, if our project has a good atmosphere, or if it doesn't, like for example, in the Spanish Wikipedia, we have the wars of 2008 and 2009, which nobody else has ever heard about. But uh, we had some very, very horrible wars, which I'm sure you've had in the projects as well. And uh, I can tell you now, we're in a peace period. So you can see people, are, and I think, honestly, I think that affiliates help with this. I don't know if a Spanish Wikipedia is a special case, because we have 13 affiliates or 14 affiliates working uh, in the one single project. But it helps a lot. Like, uh, we do have newbies, and of course, we have people who fight the newbies. But uh, in general, we do have a good uh, sort of feeling right now. Like, it's not English Wikipedia at all. So I think that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, well, I just want to clarify. I didn't mean that I look at uh, edits because of like you have kind of thousand edits and you created five articles. You just you know add every word with your edit. <laughs> uh, I actually meant that you can look how the person works. I mean, do they do articles? Or do they do like substantial changes with, with with one edit, or do they work on different topics? On what kind of topics? For example, um, from time to time, because I already have some kind of image to maintain, <laughs> uh, if I want to write about something that would be not um, uh, kind of not believe that I could do it, people would comment, "Really, you wrote an article about this? Like, how could you do it?" I would just create a new uh, identity, <laughs> a wiki project, and just <laughs> edit about that because you know you, you just get less questions. This way. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of sub puppets happening. Sub puppets are when you vote, when you change something, when you edit. Sub puppets are not. Sub puppets are not illegal. Abusing sub puppets is. I do have a sub puppet, and I was never blocked for that. <laughs> All right. So there was one. Was there one last question? Yes. This is the question. Actually, an idea that my colleague sitting next to me. Ask me to voice in English. It's, 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 it's a gentleman, Mr. Uh, this uh, idea is about, is there any chance that the WMF may, might think about opening an office in the you know, Eastern Hemisphere, like Europe and or Asia? This would probably provide lots of new opportunities for people to uh, communicate and ask questions and hold the candle. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to answer that? Well, I would love, for example, to have an office in Spain. Okay. <laughs> I have to say uh, that's not likely. There are um, there are some strong reasons why, and I'm sure Catherine can illuminate them. Um, but yeah, I mean the time difference is something like this long. It's it's terrible. I too would love to have an office in Spain. Um, <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, I think it would be incredibly wonderful if the foundation could have a presence in anywhere other than San Francisco, which is a million hours away from everybody. Um, one of the challenges that we have, very honestly speaking, is that the reason the Wikimedia projects have been able to develop the way they have with such incredible freedom about what it is that we can write and protections for our editors in many places is that the United States offers and has historically offered and hopefully will still continue, although eh, questions, um, protections through a series of legislative and constitutional um, protections in our in US law that allow for Wikipedia to host content that might be considered problematic in other countries. And then most importantly, for when that content is hosted, it provides very strong protections against the foundation for being sued for that content if someone doesn't like it. And why is that important? Because lawsuits can be very expensive, and lawsuits could cripple our ability to do any of the work that we need to do if we were caught up in them over time. So right now, the reason that we are based in the United States is not because we were created there, although, yes, that Jimmy, just had, Jimmy is an American, but because we have been very intentional about the fact that we need to protect the ability to protect the jurisdiction under which the projects operate. And I would love to see a world in which we could have offices in other countries with similar strong protections around what we, we can 
post and what we cannot post. Uh, strong protections around allowing us to post content that would be controversial in other countries. The reality is, is that very, very few countries, the list is shorter than 10, and many of them are impractical for lots of other reasons, including their islands in the middle of the Pacific, um, and with very high latency, and we wouldn't want to run our servers there. Um, many, there are very few other countries that offer those protections. So what instead I would love us to see is how do we support the development of robust distributed community organizations that can serve the communities that they work with, and then how do we build strong working relationships between those affiliate organizations and the foundation? Because the reality is, is that we have these borders that constrain our world, as we all know, anyone who's experienced a visa rejection knows, um, and yet those are also the same borders that offer us this protection. And so for now, we are in the United States, as much as I wish I could have an office in Barcelona. <laughs> I'm sorry, Madrid. Was Madrid the right answer? I think I go to Ibiza if you want. Okay, I, I think we should finish at the moment. I think we should finish at the moment. And as you can see, at 11 here, just right now, we start the strategy discussion session and the parallel room uh, session question and answer to the WN General Council, Eileen. Thank you, everyone. Those are some very cool questions.